Don't have the color or design of washi tape you need for a project? Let's make our own. I'll show you how. Welcome. This is Denise of Paper Crafty, and today I'm going to show you a technique for making your own washi tape using paper tape that you can get in the first aid section of any drug store or any, you know, box store, even the grocery store. Uh, this is a brand that I got at the Dollar Tree, so it's only $1.25. Uh, this is a bit more expensive, uh, but it can be found pretty much anywhere, and these are different. And you might just have these hanging around in your first aid kit at home, so that's even better. Okay, so this is the paper tape that you'd use for first aid. Uh, it is not the athletic tape. This is also at the Dollar Tree. This is more of a fabric type tape, and it's not a waterproof tape. This is a plastic tape. Okay, and this stuff is great. Uh, it's very similar to washi, so you can use it just like you would in, would washi tape. Uh, it is great for reinforcing uh, the edges of signatures uh, and uh, papers that you put into the signatures. Okay, so I like to start off with a non-stick uh, paper backing. I think this was an adhesive magnetic sheet, uh, and I just you know took it off and I saved the backing. You can use parchment paper. Just use whatever you have on hand that has a non-stick surface so the tape doesn't permanently stick to that after you're done stamping. All I do is I take this and I just start, kind of line this up a little bit. I like to go off of the edge of this. So I'll tape it down to this. And then I'll make it a little longer than the sheet. And this will keep the, uh, the sheet anchored like that. It's a little bit harder to see, but this will also help me line up when I go to stamp on it. Okay, so I already have this one opened. This is the inch wide. And you can get this in all different kinds of brands. You don't have to use these particular brands. You can get these on Amazon. Like I said, you can get them pretty much anywhere. I'd say, you know, Walmart, Target, uh, your grocery store, just about any place is going to have these. Um, that's what's really nice about these. They're, they're easy to find. Some are, of course, going to be less expensive than others. Uh, you are going to find that, like, some of them are really nice and kind of smooth on the top. This one is, this next care brand is, okay. Uh, I did get some at the dollar or 99 cent store, and that is a little fuzzier. It has more of a grain texture. You can see how, you know, you can see the, the lines in it. It's not, and it's a little fuzzier on top. It'll work. It'll work just fine, but the images that you get might not be quite as crisp as the ones that don't have that fuzziness on top. But you know what? Use what you have. I'm all about using what you have, and it's still, you know, depending on the project, it's not going to show up that much. It's not going to be that big of a deal if it's a little bit you know, not a super duper crisp, crisp image. And I like to have a variety of some of the wider and some of the not so wide tapes. Okay, so now in terms of ink, you can use any of these types of inks. You can use an archival ink, you can use Versafine, and you can use stays on. Whatever you use, I would make sure that the pad is super juicy. Um, the dye inks, you know, you'll get an image, but what happens is that they uh, 
soak into the paper. They don't sit on top. That's why I really wouldn't recommend any of the distress inks, but if that's all you have, you know, go ahead and try it out and see if it works for you. Um, the archival ink is also a dye ink, uh, but it seems to be working a little bit better than the distress ink line. I get the best results from uh, a pigment ink like Versafine or a solvent ink like Stazon. Okay. I'm going to use Stazon because I have found that uh, Stazon dries the quickest and doesn't smear at all and it uh, gives a really nice crisp image. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to turn it this direction because I want the um, the orientation that I want for these is is uh, vertical. Now you can do it any way you want. If you want it horizontal, you can do it long ways like that. However, whatever works best for you and for your application. Um, but for me, right now, this is what I um, want to use. All right, so I've got a whole slew of different stamps that I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using some of these from Frida at Home. These are all Elizabeth Craft Design uh, stamps from Florence uh, and from uh, Measurements is the name of this stamp set. I just love all of the uh, the different uh tape measure <laughs> and number uh, type stamps. They're really fun. And just gonna ink this puppy up and just start putting it, start laying it down in a couple places so. That'll be good for that. And I'm going to do uh, this one from the stamp set. And you don't need to be able to read everything on this. This is just to kind of get an idea, you know, a basic idea. So you can see I didn't get a good impression the first time I stamped this. Uh, I'm going to show you a little trick that I came up with for uh, getting around this in a minute. Uh, but, you know, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Um, there are ways of masking this uh, as we go along. Uh, and covering it up with some other stamps. And, you know, frankly, you know, you're not going to use every single little bit of every single uh, piece of tape either. Uh, so, you know, if you have a couple areas that aren't absolutely perfect, it's not the end of the world. I also want to point out that uh, I wanted to go over the edge on the left hand bottom corner and I did that by putting some uh, wax paper uh, over the edge there and masking it so it wouldn't go onto my uh, work surface. Okay, and as I do this, I'm trying to do some of the larger uh, stamps first so that uh, I can fill in with the smaller stamps later. I discovered I got a better stamped image on the uh, third or fourth time I stamped uh, the the image. Uh, so I, the trick I came up with is to start 
by doing the first couple uh, stamped images on a scrap piece of paper. Uh, just so that, you know, I, I got a couple good impressions before I started putting it on the surface that I really cared about. Uh, you can see here, I probably should have done it twice instead of just once, uh, but, you know, I'm, in, I'm learning. I'll use this one. Oh, it's upside down. Mistakes happen. Don't sweat it. Uh, I'm just going through now with some of the smaller stamps and filling in the uh, areas with gaps. And I'm really just making a collage of stamps. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, so here's what you get. Um, you get all of these strips of collaged uh, washi, and you can just take this off really easily up here and use that on your projects. So that is just kind of fun. And then I have some of these number strips that I did from that measurement stamp set that I really love. So I just want to give a couple tips for how to get a good impression from these longer number and measuring stamps. If you have a long stamping block like this one, uh, you can use that. I just take my stamp, uh, put it image side down, and then I line it up. Uh, it really helps to have a, uh, a cutting mat with uh, lines on it so that you can kind of get it even. Uh, and then I stamp it off on some scrap paper again. I do that like three or four times, uh, or as many times as needed to get a good impression. Uh, you've really got to be careful to uh, press, not too firmly, but fairly firmly all along the stamp so that uh, you get uh, an impression all across the long stamp, especially in the middle. Uh, and when I'm uh, stamping on the actual tape, I start from the top and I work my way down so that I don't uh, accidentally drag my arm through the ink. So I stamped that same image uh, several times on different pieces of tape uh, and you can see I inked it 
between each stamping. Now I'm moving on to a new stamp. And again, I am uh, trying it out on just regular paper before I go to the washi. Because the first time around, you don't always get the very best impression. Um, sometimes it takes a couple of inkings for the, uh, for the stamp to give a really nice impression. If you have a stamping platform, either the Tim Holtz one or the Misty, I highly recommend uh, them for the longer stamp sets. Uh, they, you can uh, line them up a little bit better and you can uh, stamp the image multiple times in case you need to. You don't get a, a great impression the first time around. So for these longer stamps like this, I'm going to use the Tim Holtz stamping platform. Uh, and I'm just, you can see, I'm going over the edges. Okay, so that's good right there. Make sure that fits. Yes, it totally does. So normally you'd line up the stamp along the tape uh, before you flip that plastic piece on top over to grab the stamp so that everything's lined up when you before you go to add the ink. Now, my stamps have already been used, so I don't want to uh, accidentally transfer some ink that might be um, still on the stamp to the tape because I want a nice crisp clear image. So I'm using this piece of wax paper and you can see it's very translucent and I'm just lining that stamp up over the tape uh, with the piece of wax paper between the tape and the stamp on this and this also helps me see where the tape is because it's you know it's white underneath and the tape is white so if I can see off the edges where the tape goes it will help me align the stamp to where the tape is there we go so I don't get any any ink on the tape. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that, and then I will ink the stamp up. Okay, so you can see this needs a little bit more ink. This just allows me to add ink until I get the right amount of ink on the paper or this. Maybe that's interfering with that a little bit. All right, so that looks pretty good happy with that. All right, so now I'm just going to take this again. Uh, and I'm just going to, again, line this stamp up with the next one. I have to turn it around so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I can just move this paper around. So that makes it a little easier to position. All right, that looks pretty good. I can see off of this edge and this, uh, this edge so that I can get, 
you know, it's centered. I might move it over this way a little bit more, over to the right, because I do have the stamp, uh, the tape up here, even though the paper is not underneath it. All right, and then I'm going to put that right back on the stamping block. And I can ink this up. So using this wax paper really uh, makes it easy to reposition the stamp for each new piece of tape that you want to stamp on. Uh, you don't have to clean the stamp between each new piece of tape, so that's a bonus. It makes it a lot quicker and a lot easier. And you just have, I think, a lot more control uh, over where you're going to be positioning the stamp, especially if you tape over the edges of, uh, you know, the piece of paper that you're going to be stamping on. It just makes it uh, a really easy process. Uh, I, I really like this method and I think I'm going to be using it a lot more as I go forward. Um, I haven't seen anybody else use this before so maybe I invented something. Woo! And then I'm just going to keep on doing this, you know, so all the way down and I can stamp it as many times as it takes to get a nice, uh, really beautiful impression. So you can see how good this turns out using this method. There's some of these tape measures and different um, sizes. And this number stamp here to, stamps really, really nicely on this tape. I've also got these. I like this orientation for this one. Super cool. And I've got these. Okay, so you can see that this one here um, didn't stamp very precisely. The tape kind of lifted up. So to fix that, all I did is I, I uh, this one, you know, I just stamped over. It's not a big deal. Um, I'm going to use that as an example for something else. But... So you can take your burnishing tool or you can take your bone folder, whatever's handiest. Uh, and I just kind of, uh, you know, rubbed these down uh, and burnished them down a little bit better on the uh, stamping platform. And then I continued to stamp these. Uh, this one, as you can see, it's misaligned. It has a little bit of a, sh you know, a little shadow there. So it's not a super crisp uh, image. But what I do want to do is show you, I'm going to use this one as an example of how you can just, you know, take this and colorize it to match your project. Let's say I want, I'm not going to use any oxides because I want just some dye inks. I don't want anything to go over uh, the top of these numbers and the oxides I'm a little worried will uh, <clears throat> not get, you know, like hide these numbers, which is not. Let's go with these three colors. We'll go with Peacock Feather, Pumice Stone, and Shabby Shutters. So, um, you know, you could just take and, you know, rub your ink pad along here to kind of colorize this if you'd like. I'm not, pumice stone's pretty uh, subtle. <laughs> um, so let's see, I'll just, maybe I'll just rub some different areas on here just to kind of show you what you can do with this. Green. Green's not 
showing up really well. There we go. And this stays on, should not be affected by the uh, dye inks at all. And then you can just add some water to this if you'd like. Kind of get it to do, do its kind of cool wicking thing that it does. You can just move that around a little bit. I'm going to wipe up the excess. That was probably way more ink than we actually need for this project. Okay. And then you can just leave that to dry. So if you have a project that are these colors and you need a, uh, a piece of washi that are these colors, well, you've got then this really great washi that's exactly customized to the colors that you need. All right, so I'm, I'm, I'm impatient. So I'm just going to dry this very quickly. It would help if I had this plugged in, wouldn't it? Oh, heck. What the heck happened here? Okay, so then you just, you know, for whatever project that you have, let's say we would just want to tape this little piece right here. This is still a little bit wet, but it's just really cool because then, you know, it's just like, well, this is still wet, but it's just like washi. You can see right through it, right? You've got that sheer effect. I'm going to tape the other side too. Let's see. There we go. <laughs> Maybe that's a little bit more obvious. But you see, you can see the text right through that. You can see the text right through it down here, just like you would washi. And then, you know, you have customized washi for your project. So pretty cool, eh? That's still wet, so but you kind of, you get the idea, right? <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you did, please give it a, please give this video a like, a thumbs up. Uh, leave me a comment. Have you ever made washi like this before? Do you have way too much washi like me? Um, but when you go to look for it, you can never find exactly what you need. So this is a great technique for, for that kind of thing. And uh, if you like this kind of content, uh, I encourage you to consider subscribing to my channel. Okay. And check out this next video where I share another DIY craft project. Again, this is Denise of Paper Crafty and Craft On.